Pipe Tobaccos. Old Briar. And Dill's Best. Senno Cigarettes. And Encore Cigarettes. Members of the complete line of tobacco products made by United States Tobacco Company present Martin Kane, Private Eye, starring Lloyd Nolan. the old hay burners. <laughs> Good to see you, Marty. All the horses are fine, but uh, something worrying my best jockey here. That's the reason he asked me to arrange this meeting. Uh, Marty, Eddie Stevens. Well, nice to meet you, Eddie. Sit down. Sit down. No, 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 no. Thanks, Marty. I have to be getting out to the track. There's a likely looking colt I might buy. Uh, Whatever it is Eddie wants you to do, take good care of him, Marty. Sure will. Oh, and by the way, I'm expecting you out for the races today. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, by the way, you said if I could bring some friends that... Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Well, I would like to. A couple of boys from the police department, this is their day off. Oh, by all means, bring them along, Marty. I have a really big one running today. Oh. Uh, you know my box number. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. And, uh, Roy, thanks a minute. Yeah. Oh, forget it, Marty. Uh, mm. Take good care of Eddie there. Bad business having jockey with problems on his mind. Oh, yeah. Sir. Hello, Marty. <laughs> Bye, Ryan. Thanks again. He's a great guy. Yeah, he is. Come on, sit down, Eddie. Well, tell me, where does it pinch? I want you to get some heat off me, Mr. Kane. What kind of heat? Loan sharks. Oh. How much have they got their hooks into you for now, huh? Plenty, but that's not the point. I just want you to keep them off me for today. They're going to get paid tonight. They've been uh, threatening you? Yeah. The full treatment if I don't get the money up by noon. I can't make it before tonight. Now, you're a guy that's been around. You know everybody in this town. Just get them off my back for today. They're going to get paid tonight. Who's they? Stakes Hanson and little Jackie Dennis. Know them? Yeah, I... Yes, uh... Yeah, I know them. Uh... Who are you riding today, Eddie? Just one, Mr. Kane. McGregor in the third is a top-heavy favorite. Well, Stakes Hanson, huh? These guys don't even let you out of their sight. Hi, you Stakes. Come on. Get up. You shouldn't eavesdrop, Stakes. Don't you know that's bad manners? Give me that rod. No, yes. Committing suicide's an old hobby of mine. Listen, one Now, listen, guy. Stakes. Don't get me sore. I'll let you have your rod right across your skull. What are you getting so hot about? This ain't your hassle. It wasn't my hassle. It is now. Officially. See? How long have you been listening at that door? Long enough. All right. Then you heard what Eddie said. You'll get your money back tonight. Is that all right? In case Eddie doesn't put up the money, all right, then the hassle is back in his lap. It's his. So you'll lay off, you see? Right now, get out of here. Go on. Blow. My gun. Oh, no. In my business, the triggers are just the root of all evil. Come on. Don't forget. Tonight. Well, Eddie, looks like the vice president of the Gorilla National Bank has granted you an extension on your loan. So the only ride you're going to have to worry about is the ride you're making on McGregor this afternoon. Good luck. Thanks, Mr. Kane.
Well, you know, I think they fed that goat sleeping pills instead of oats this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Miss Reed does love company, you'll be happy to know that none of us had a winner, Mr. Kane. Well, no, I'd, I'd really be happier if, uh, if I thought all of you had winners. Well, I think Mother would settle for just Father being a winner. He's the big money better for the family. Huh? You can't win a lot unless you bet a lot, can you, Elaine? <laughs> And it's much less worry when it's borrowed money, isn't it, dear? Don't worry, dear. You'll get it back. Is this your first time at the track, Mr. Kane? Well, no. Of course, I don't come out here often. But when I do, I must admit, I lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my first time. My line is books, not oh. bookmakers. Is that right? Say, can I borrow a match? Oh, sure. Here they are. See, I run a small bookshop. Oh. Uh, as a matter of fact, Eddie Stevens invited me out here today. That's a good boy, Eddie. Yeah, he certainly is. I've known him since we were kids. I know Fred here, too. He's a good customer of mine. Whenever I get a little time off from training horses for Mr. Haywood, I like to take short trips through English literature. Yeah? <laughs> well, who's this? Here I am, Mr. Kane. Well, sorry Sergeant, to be late. Sergeant, where's the captain? Oh, he'll be along, sir. I <laughs> hope he doesn't wait too long. Half the day's gone already. Yeah. This is our ho uh, host, Roy Haywood. This is Sergeant Ross of the New York City Police. Oh, I'm glad you could make it, sir. Thank I'm glad you. you could make it. I'd like to have you meet my brother and his wife. This is Mr. Jack Hayward. How, How do you do? do? Mrs. Hayward. How do you do? Their daughter, Miss Elaine Hayward. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> Mr. Harry Cook. How do you do? Good. And uh, Fred Walker, my trainer. How do you do? Hello. Well, I better get down to our jockey. I think this is our race yeah, coming right, up. Right, yes. Sit down, Excuse oh, me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, golly, this is exciting. <laughs> well, what's the name of uh, your horse in this race, Mr. Uh, uh, McGregor. Oh. Hey. Say, Roy, you know, I never thought of it before, McGregor. Do you think it'd help boot him home if we set out for a set of bagpipes? <laughs> <laughs> Want to see me? Just a minute. Look, Eddie. We want this in real bad. Get his nose up against that gate and don't waste an inch. I want you to break all him right, on top. All right, all right. How many times you got it? Whoa, time? Eddie. Take it easy. You're kind of jumpy today, aren't you? What are you so nervous about? Well, it's a big race, so I'm nervous. Why don't you go up and sit in your box and relax? Don't worry about it. Whatever McGregor's got in him, I'll get out of it. Just break him on top and keep him on top. He figures to win going away. And don't fit the whip to him. Under any circumstances, no whip, you hear? I hear. Okay. Good luck. After those instructions, I'll need him. If you really want McGregor to run, why don't you let me ride him my way? Because I'm trainer here, Stevens, and I'm giving the orders. Any questions? Okay, Mr. Walker. You're the boss. Well, well, quite, quite the favorite, McGregor, from my observation of this scratch sheet. <laughs> scratch sheet. Ridiculous terminology. Well, horse players have a language all their own. Yep, you know who seems to understand at least of all? Lady Luck. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, there they come. They're coming out of the paddock. And these are the horses for the third race. That's Inspector. Isn't he beautiful, Sergeant? Oh, hi. Yes, Mr. Sergeant. Oh, thank you. Oh, he's what I'd call a, a perfect specimen of the equine thoroughbred. <laughs> I've been very anxious to meet you, Mr. Kane. Oh, really? Well, thank you. I, I hope it's not because a nice lady like you has an unsolved murder kicking around the house loose. <laughs> of course not. It's mostly because I am interested in preventing crime. Oh? As a matter of fact, I'd like to have you come to a lecture I'm giving tonight. Uh, well, that's where I go get I, well. Takes a little time to punch out $40,000 worth of tickets, you know. That's 40, <laughs> yeah. Hey, is he kidding? Is he really going to bet $40,000? Jack doesn't consider it a best, Mr. Kane. In the first place, McGregor is such a favorite, he considers it an investment. In the second place, if he loses, he's losing my money. Oh, well, let's take a look. Yeah, McGregor's really the favorite, all right. You know, by the time he gets that 40,000 into the machines, McGregor will end up about one to four. Uh, sending out 40,000 to bring back 50, that's no good. There go the changes. Oh, you were right, Mr. Kane. McGregor is one to four, thanks to Jack's investment. Well, I think for once, Jack's bet was a good risk. I really do. It had better be. Well, why? You know perfectly well why. I lent him that 40000 I'd like to get it back. Oh, don't worry, dear. You'll get it back. 
Only way that horse can lose is if the jockey turns him the wrong way. <laughs> I don't think Eddie's going to try any monkey business. He better not. I'll murder him if he does. Boy, what a mob out there. Well, Mr. Cook, did you pick us out a good one? Well, I, I did make a small wager, yes, but I... I've been told it's hard luck to talk. Oh. <laughs> First day at the track, and already he knows all the rules. <laughs> oh, I, whoops. Gee, oh, oh, I'll get I'm terribly right. sorry. Hey. What's this? Do you uh, just keep this around for a quick manicure? I suppose it does seem a little incongruous, my having that in my purse. But... Doesn't even seem incongruous. It seems very interesting. Yes, Mr. Kane. And it should be particularly interesting to you. Yeah. I'll explain after the race. They're all practically in. The horses are at the post. Come on, McGregor. Good old McGregor. And they're off. And that's majority taking the lead, followed by Pamela Ace, Gabby Jones, Swanson, and McGregor. Majority from the number five post on top, down the stretch. <laughs> Majority with McGregor moving up, Swanson, Pamela, and Gabby Jones. And now as they take the turn, it's majority on top. McGregor, the favorite, is moving up on the outside. Pamela Jones, Swanson, and Gabby Jones. And now McGregor is taking the lead in the backstretch. It's McGregor by a lane. Majority, Pamela Ace. McGregor opening a gap of two lengths in the backstretch. Now they're making the turn for home. It's McGregor on top. Pamela Ace has come on to be second. Swanson is third. Into the home stretch they come. It is McGregor. Pamela Ace coming on with Swanson. McGregor is still on top, but Pamela Ace is overtaking him. It's Pamela Ace taking the lead. Pamela Ace with Swanson coming on and McGregor third. Pamela Ace and McGregor and Swanson. And it's Pamela Ace, Swanson, McGregor in that order. All patrons are requested not to destroy their mutual tickets until the result is official. Oh, no. He threw it! That little... He was holding that horse back. It was so obvious it was criminal. What do you think, Fred? I don't want to say. Well, he's through. He'll never ride for me again. I can't say that I blame you. Well, bring him to me when he's dressed, will you, Fred? We'll be up on the terrace. Right. Oh, no. oh look at the price on that winner. The result is official. The winner, number two, Pamela Ace. Stevens. Well, what do you want? Nothing. But Mr. Hayward wants to see you right away. So it's like that, eh? Uh huh, it's like that. Well, you can't win them all. No, but you can try. Well, I tried, Daddy O. You did try it. Remember, you told me how to ride that race. Remember, I give you an argument. And remember, you stuffed a big no down my throat. Okay, then. Remember this. If the boss is looking for a fall guy for losing that race, I'm handing him you. <laughs> I'm telling you, Eddie, now that the others have gone down to place their bed, I'm telling you, you're all through. You'll never ride for me again. Okay, okay, if that's the way you want it. But before I go, there's something I've got to tell you about the handling of that race. Nothing to tell. You deliberately pulled that horse, you dirty little crook. That's what you say, and saying ain't enough. You've got to prove it. And personally, I don't think you could prove anything except that you're a phony living off your wife's dough. Boy, oh, oh, cut it out, cut it out. Now, take it easy, Jack, take it easy. Take it easy? I can see how easy you take it after losing 40,000 bucks on a crooked jockey. Oh, Hold it. And these are the horses for the fifth race. I still got to tell you about the handling of that race. But there's a beetle in this next one that I like, and I want to get a bet down. So I'm going down, and then I'm coming right back and pick it up where I left off. All right, Eddie. Suit yourself. But remember, it's your funeral. All right, now, quit shoving there. One line, please. One line. Two tickets on number five. Oh! 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 Oh!
talking. This guy's dead. Oh. And he's oh. even stabbed to oh. death. Let me out of here. Oh. Please let me out of here. Is he dead? Here, what's your action in this thing, Snakes? Nothing, you hear me? Nothing. Let go, will you? Listen, fill me in now. Come on. There ain't nothing to fill in. We're just keeping an eye on him, that's all. Did you shove that ship in his back? You don't think they'd kill a guy before he gets paid off, do you? No, that makes sense. How much was the bite? 22 G's out the window. Whoever knocked Eddie off sure wasn't doing us no favor. That you can believe. All right, you better get out of here anyhow. Go on, stand. Oh. All right, step out of the way, please. Step out of the way. Break it up. Break it up. Break it up. Break it up. Come on, step out of the way. All right, move right, right up. Well, how do you like this? I finally managed to get all the way out here, and what do I find? A murder. Well, that's Eddie Stevens, all right. We're going to have to have a hand with this. Yeah, they're, they're coming now on their way, the stretcher crew and some extra men, Captain. I want him and the steward's office. We'll make that the basis of operation. Uh, very well, sir. Right this way, gentlemen. Now, he was standing directly in front of this window. Is that right? Yeah, 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 yeah yes, sir. You yes. figure to be our chief witness. Now, tell me, what did you see? Well, nothing, really, sir. I saw him drop. Just saw him drop out of sight. Just like that, right out of sight. It definitely established that the knife that killed Eddie Stevens was the same one that was found in your purse. There's no doubt about it. Well, can you explain how that knife was in your purse? Remember that lecture I mentioned earlier? Yes, I do. I'm speaking before a committee that is trying to get a bill passed to prohibit those weapons. The knife in my purse was to be used as demonstration. I only obtained it this morning. Okay. Can you explain how the knife got out of your purse? I cannot. It either fell out as it did earlier, or someone took it out. Well, if it was any one of us, we'll know soon enough. Well, that's why they took all of our fingerprints, isn't it, Mr. Kane? Yes, Captain Burke is probably uh, comparing them right now. Now, Mr. Walker, you, uh, you knew Eddie very well. What kind of a guy was he, basically? A no good guy. Enemies? Plenty. Friends? Hmm, not so plenty. Here are the fingerprint reports, Captain. Well, it's about time. Let me have a look at these. Well, what do you know? Exactly. Uh, that's how fine. How do you do? That guy, friend or no friend, he'd better have a mighty fine explanation. Well, who's going to tell him, Captain? You are. But, but, but you're my superior officer, sir. I know. That's what gives me the right to give you the orders. You tell it. Oh, gosh. This, this is one mission I'd like to delegate to a, a really diplomatic person. I wish Happy McMahon were here. Well, Mr. Kane, you seem very thoughtful. Oh. Well, maybe it was because I was just thinking. Of what? <laughs> well, I was thinking, here I am, Martin Kane, private investigator. And for all I know, I might be sitting right at the table with the murderer. Oh, what? Why, sure. As far as I know, you might be the murderer. Oh. And as far as you know, I might be. Marty, Sergeant Ross would like a word with you. Oh, sure, right away. Pardon me, will you? <laughs> yeah, what is it, Sergeant? Well, Mr. Kane, uh, you see, it's... Uh, it's we it's uh, way, uh, got a report on the fingerprints on that jump knife. Oh, fine, uh, fine. And Mrs. Hayward's prints are on it. Well, naturally. Uh, and the, there's one other set, sir. Well, good. Is it one of our group? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Precisely. Oh, that's fine. That really narrows it down. Now. And how? Hmm. Who's worthy? Yours, Mr. Kane. Oh, I thought you had something. Naturally, I handled that knife. You did? Why, of course. When? Well, Why? Just, just before the big race. See, Mrs. Hayward dropped it out of her purse. I reached over, picked it up, and gave it back to her. You don't mind if I check on that, do you, Kane? No, she's right over there. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Kane. Are there any new developments? No, not so far. Well, I was just wondering if I might make a telephone call. I, uh, my wife's been very ill, and, and uh, I told her I would call. Well, I, uh, uh, I didn't know about that. I'm very sorry. Yeah, sure. You go ahead and make your call. I Thanks. hope everything comes out all right. Well, thanks a lot. And these are the horses for the sixth race. Sorry it has taken so long, but I had to wait for some woman to get through using the phone booth. But now, uh, I've simply got to go home, Captain Burke, and I'd like your permission to leave. Is the matter cook something wrong? Well, yes, my wife. She's, she's been ill, and, and uh, well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I just talked to her, and I think she's taking a turn for the worse. Oh, oh. go ahead. Yeah. We'll call you if we need you. Oh, thank you very much. All right. 
Well, I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Cook. Bye, Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Nice Bye. Yeah, right. And uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Killer, for telling, letting us know it was you that killed Eddie what? Stevens. What? Oh, God. You're out of your mind. No, I'm you not. You're saying, you're All right, take it. Yes, I do know what I'm saying, and these mutual tickets will bear me out. There are eight thousand dollars worth. That means the two thousand dollars apiece was bet on every other horse in the McGregor race. Why, Harry never saw eight thousand dollars in one lump in his whole life. Yeah, this batch right here, two thousand dollars on Pamela's to win. That represents sixty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand dollars. Incredible. Yes, but it's true. You see, Roy. Your jockey, Eddie, needed a pile of money, and he needed it quick. Why? Well, he'd gotten in the grasp of some loan sharks. Well, that's why he wanted to see you then, huh? That's Eddie? right. Well, anyway, Eddie was in a spot, and he had to get off of it, so he dreamed himself up a Lulu. Now, in a five-horse race, he was r riding the top-heavy favorite. That meant that every one of the other four horses was a long shot. Oh, now it comes clear. Yeah. Now, Eddie knew Cook here. He got him here to the track, and he pumped him full of instructions. So Cook bet $2,000 to win... On every one of the other four horses in the McGregor race. And then, then all Eddie had to do was pull McGregor, and no matter which way you look at it, he, he wins a fortune. See, all that Eddie didn't figure on was human nature. Mr. Harry Cook here stopped running to form. It happens to horses, and it happens to men. I think that he got his idea when he saw that knife fall out of your bag. So it came to him that if Eddie were out of the way, he'd have $60,000 in his kick and nobody could say that it wasn't his. Yes, and those ah. mutual tickets are as good as cash. So Cook stole the knife out of the purse. He used a handkerchief to protect against fingerprints. And then in the window in front of the ticket window there in the crowd, he slipped the knife right into Eddie's ribs, and that was that. Except for one thing. When he returned here, Cook gave himself away. Well, I don't go along with that. We've been standing right here with him ever since he came back. As far as I'm concerned, he never made a false move. Oh, yes, he did, Captain. He made one small one. Remember, he said that he had to wait for a phone booth before he could call his wife. But yeah, what's that got sure. to do with it? Well, he just didn't know enough about racetracks. That's how he trapped himself. I still don't get it, Marty. Well, it's really pretty simple. There are no public phone booths at a racetrack. Oh, that's right. right. That's so people can't telephone information away from the track. Wait a minute. Oh! You're oh. very right, Captain. Our friend here, Harry Cook, went after a quick fortune, do or die. With a murder on his hands, it looks like he's going to die. You can make a bet on that, and it won't be a wager. <laughs> Say, what happened to that Marty? I haven't seen him around here in a couple of days. Oh, he's probably over in his office, relentlessly perusing the annals of scientific criminal research. Well, I miss that guy around here. I think I'll give him a ring. Oh, why don't you? Uh, Martin Kane speaking. Oh, Hap, is it you? Yeah. <laughs> well, what can I do for you? Oh, you just wanted to talk to me. You picked a fine time. You wake me up right in the middle of a nap. No, no, I was just dreaming about the racetrack, yeah. Well, you, mo you won't miss me much anymore. I'm coming right over there. Yeah, I'll be right over. Sure. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The way I figured is, Marty's office is six minutes and 22 seconds away from here. In exactly 11 seconds, he should come swinging through that door. Oh, my goodness, Happy. Seems to me you're cutting Mr. Kane's estimated time of arrival rather fine, aren't you? No, Sergeant Ross. My observation to Mr. Kane is that he's a man of unswerving habits. Now, if he says that he's left his office, then he'll be here at a certain time. But, well, well, what did I tell you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> How are you, Hap? How are you, Sergeant? Hello, sir. Hiya, Martin. Say, I'm sorry I so rudely interrupted your uh, dream about the racetrack. No. But, uh, did you dream yourself up some winners? No. As a matter of fact, Hap, I'm only going to bet on sure things from now on. Like, for instance, I would like to bet 15 cents on Old Briar to win. And, folks, there's a bet you can make right now. I'll be right here, same time, next week. Good night. Martin Kane, Private Eye, has been brought to you by the makers of Old Briar, the master mixture of rare flavor and aroma. Dill's best flavor cut for extra mildness and cool smoking. Sano cigarettes, a great cigarette with less than 1% nicotine. And Encore, the better filter tip cigarette for filter fresh smoking.
all members of a complete line of products for every tobacco taste. exciting series of Martin Kane Private Eye, starring Lloyd Nolan on radio every Sunday afternoon over the NBC radio network. Portions of this program have been mechanically reproduced. Thank you.